Mm, this one's way too big. Wait a minute. Oh yeah, this is better. Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. And if you're new here, I'm Stella, and I love making miniatures for my Barbie's dollhouse using mainly cardstock. In today's video, I'll show you how to make this miniature iron and ironing board for your dolls. And as usual, I have a free printable template to help you make your own version. You'll find all the infos and the download link in the video. So now let's get started. To make an ironing board, cut this part into cardstock several times. And as always, I recommend using cardstock from old packagings for this. Stack all the layers together until you reach a thickness of about 3 millimeters. Trace the outline of the ironing board on a piece of fabric, add a 2 centimeters allowance and cut, making sure to divide the curved parts into smaller sections. Now take some cotton or fiber fill and glue it to the cardstock base. I suggest using double-sided tape to do this. Wrap the fabric around the board and fix it to the back. Now cut this part and attach it to the bottom side of the board. To make the ironing board's folding legs, cut this part into cardstock several times and if you're using my free printable template, I'd suggest you pierce these little holes with a needle. Stack all these layers together until you reach a thickness of 4mm. Repeat this step to make two identical pairs of legs. Set them aside for a second, then cut this part 3 or 4 times and glue the layers together. Repeat the same process for this part. To assemble the legs, measure 2 cm from the base of each leg, then glue them to the two shorter bars, like this. Now cut this part into lightweight cardstock and fold the sides along the dashed lines. Then cut this part into cardstock a couple of times, stack the layers together, and finally attach the resulting pieces to the sides of the element we prepared earlier. And you'll need to make two of these. Now cut this part fold it along the dashed lines and once again make two identical pieces. Next, cut these small rectangles into cardstock and glue them in pairs. Then attach them to the other piece, like this. At this point you should have all these elements. Cover them with acrylic gesso first. Then use acrylic paints in two shades of brown to mimic the look of wood. Finally, add a coat of clear varnish for a slightly glossy finish. It's time to assemble our miniature ironing board. Attach these two elements to the bottom of the board. Next, take four eye pins or sewing pins. Use them to connect the legs together. And then to attach them to these two pieces. Finally, glue the legs to the board. To make a miniature iron, cut this part of the template into cardstock twice and glue the two layers together. Repeat the same steps for this part, then assemble the two elements. And just a reminder, if you have a Cricut or a Silhouette cutting machine, you can use my digital templates, which you can find in my shop, linked in the description box. And if you're considering buying your first machine, or you simply want to try a new tool, or even just get replacement mats, I have some good news! I just became a Cricut affiliate, so if you want, you can use the links pinned in my comments or description box, and that's going to support my channel, which I would be very grateful for. Now, cut this part into lightweight cardstock, give it a slightly curved shape, and fold all the tabs inwards. Glue both elements to the piece we assembled earlier. Then cut this rectangle and glue it to the bottom of the iron. Next, cut this part into lightweight cardstock. Give it a somewhat curved shape. Then fold the bottom tab inward. Attach the resulting piece to the back of the iron's body. Now cut this part several times and glue the elements together in a group of two or three layers. Then cut this part and use it as a base to attach all those pieces we just made. Cut this little rectangle and glue it to the bottom of the previous piece. Then cut this part, roll it against the pen to give it a rounded shape and glue it to the front of the little piece. Finally attach this element to the rest of the iron structure. To make a handle for our miniature iron, cut this part several times and stack all the layers together. The resulting element should be approximately 4mm thick. Attach the handle to the iron's body, then cut these tiny buttons and stick them to the handle. Cover the finished piece with a couple of coats of acrylic gesso to make the surface a bit more even. Then paint it with acrylic paint or nail polish. 
Now print this part to the template, cut each element and glue everything to the iron, like this. Then cut this part and attach every piece in place. Finally use a pen to add a little design to the buttons. Next cut this part and if you're using my free printable template, I suggest using a hole punch for this. Then glue the two circles together and paint the resulting piece with the same color as the iron's body. Glue this little wheel to the iron's top. Then cut this part into metallic cardstock. If you don't have any, you can use a piece of regular cardstock covered with kitchen foil or metallic gift wrap or even painted with metallic paint. Attach this part to the iron. Then take a piece of elastic thread, cut this strip into copy paper twice and roll each strip around both ends of the thread. Glue the resulting piece to the base of the iron. To make a little plug, cut this part and glue all the elements together. Cut two little pieces of metallic wire, attach them to the plug and finally glue the plug to the cable. An army and your steam iron and ironing board are ready! As promised, here's the link to the free printable template and if you're interested in the SVG and Silhouette Studio files, there's a link to my shop in the description box. If your dolls need a clothes rack for all their freshly ironed clothes, you can make them one following this tutorial. And this is all for today's video, until next time, bye!